we know from the literature is if I go to move my right upper limb, my contralateral trunk fires approximately 120 to 160 milliseconds prior to the focal movement, right? Now, the research paradigm for fee forward control is always the upper limb it's because it's the easiest that we can record, okay? Think about this in terms of stability and mobility. I want stability on the contralateral trunk because of the weight of the moving limb is a postural perturbation. Yes? This is a postural perturbation for movement. And that's often what is happening with our patients. They go to move. They don't have the feed forward postural control. And so the movement becomes a postural perturbation. They aren't able to cope with that postural perturbation. And so then they are into reactive balance strategies. Yeah. So now their reactive balance strategies are becoming their feed forward control. If I want to move my scapula, I need to have a stable trunk on which to move the scapula. Yeah. And so therefore, I want to have stability on my right to be able to get selective mobility of my right scapula. Okay, and so that's how the trunk interchanges in terms of the focus or the bias of the feed forward control depending upon the task at hand. So you need to be careful, you need to think about what task am I setting the patient up to do and what are the feed forward postural requirements of that task? Because if you don't think about the feed forward postural requirements, your task will not be successful or as successful as you would like it to be, or they're going to bring in compensatory or atypical motor behavior to cope with the postural perturbation. Mm 